Lydia. And I'm Chris. Today on From A to Vegan, we'd like to talk about winter squashes and pumpkins. Winter squashes and pumpkins are a great storage crop. And what that means is when they're harvested in the fall, they can, if you store them in a cool, dry place in your home, no need to refrigerate them, they can literally last for months. And how long have you had these? I've had these for about six months. I bought a whole lot of them back in October and it's now April and these are the last of them and the reason why I like to keep some of them this long is aside from the fact that they hold that long is that they tend to ripen up more they get an, a more orangey color and the flavors and the sugars concentrate when I got this one back in October it was all this bluish greenish gray color now, it's still edible at that point, but I like to let it ripen up because it becomes more flavorful. What I like about these is that they are high in a lot of minerals and vitamins like calcium and zinc and potassium, and they're just delicious and versatile. Yeah, they're also high in fiber, low calorie, and low, a low acid food. So if you have stomach problems, you can substitute uh, the, the pumpkin puree for any recipe that would call for tomatoes. So what about this one? What is this kind of squash? This is actually called a Hubbard squash. I got this at a local farm and you can see that it's kind of uh, ripened up. It's very orange now. It's usually a little darker green and what what it's used for mostly is pumpkin pies and breads. Okay. I like to use the butternut squash for things like soups and stir fries. And you had mentioned that you had used this for a chili? A curry. A curry. I actually used it in a curry, like a, a Thai style curry cooked in coconut milk with some pineapple mm -hmm. chunks. And the good thing about that is that it cooks very quickly. It's a little deceiving because it's mm -hmm. it's a little hard. It's a little hard to peel and cut into. But once you cube it up and you put it in the pan, it really takes about 10 minutes to cook. And what type is this? This is actually a fairy tale pumpkin squash. And this is my favorite. It's very meaty and dense and it's extremely versatile. It has a mild flavor, a little stronger than the butternut squash. It's got an intense orange color once it's baked and pureed. And you can use it in a number of recipes from pumpkin pies, pumpkin breads, to chilies, soups, and actually sauces. Sounds delicious. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna process this one. I'm gonna show, show you how to cut it, seed it, and bake it and puree it. So we have all of our tools here and I have the oven on already. And we're gonna put down a wet paper towel here to stabilize the cutting board. It's um, really hard to cut this pumpkin. It's a hard surface and we're using a sharp knife. So we really don't want this board moving around while we're trying to cut it. Now, how I find, the easiest way I find to cut into a large pumpkin this size and this hard is to start from the center, cutting outwards towards me. So it's a little hard as you can see, but if you take it half at a time, it makes it a lot easier to cut through this. And are you gonna cut it up more before you put it into the oven? No, I'm just gonna cut the two halves, seed it, see if we can pop this open. As you can see, it's got this gorgeous, intense orange color. And it smells delicious. It does, I can smell it. Some pumpkins don't smell so great when they're raw. No, they, the big pumpkins that you the get The jack-o'-lantern. They yeah, don't they, smell. They're yeah, they're not the best for eating. And that's why I like this one the most, because it's just got an amazing flavor or smell even when it's raw. And are you going to bake it with anything else? Do you want to put oil on it or anything? No, no, we don't want to add, introduce any additional flavors because we don't know exactly what we're going to be using this for. I'm going to bake it, puree it, and then we can use it in either pumpkin pies or a pasta sauce 
and so we don't know what we're going to be using it for. Okay. We don't want to introduce additional flavors. So now what we're going to do is we're going to seed the pumpkin and because these seeds are a little large, are the whole large. is actually a little too fibrous. We're not going to bake these. We're okay. probably just going to seed it and, and throw the seeds out because they're not going to be that great to eat if we, uh, if we roast them. Mm -hmm. So we can just choose a tool and start and digging. Start in. digging. And this is good if you have kids to get them to do this too. Oh yeah, this is this is the this safe is the, and fun yes, part. I find the that dangerous part. No, I find that the melon baller, because it's got kind of a sharper edge, mm -hmm. tends to be a better tool for yep. this. Or you actually got the. Um, yeah. The grapefruit spoon, yep. and that works really well too. Yeah, that's why I took it because I knew that I was going to need a little help down here because it's so fibrous. So our pumpkins are all cleaned up and ready to bake. And they smell really good. They really, really do. And it doesn't matter if it's not cut that evenly, you don't want it really to sit flush on your baking sheet because it creates a, a sort of a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And then when it's baked and you pull it out, hot water splashes all over you. Yeah. So it's actually better that they're not that even. Okay. And that's, that's all I do. I just place them face down, pop them in the oven, 450 degrees for about an hour. You test it out, make sure between 45 minutes and an hour to see that it's still going well, and you're done. So Chris, now we're ready to put them in the oven. And we just want to make sure that we have some sort of deep dish to put them in because it will have some liquid buildup. You mm -hmm. can't use just a cookie sheet. It's a little dangerous. So it doesn't matter if it's glass or if it's a metal. It does not because okay. the pumpkins are not acidic. They can go in any sort of dish as long as it's deep enough and large enough to hold the pumpkin halves. Our pumpkin is ready and it's time to take it out of the oven. Wow, this looks great, Chris. See how it's uh, just the skin has browned and then you have all these juices that have caramelized on the dish. This is exactly what we're looking for. It means that the pumpkin has baked and has brought out all of the sugars. And it's going to be delicious in any recipe we use it in. So what's the next step? Well, we're gonna wait for it to cool down and then I'm gonna spoon it all out and put it through the food processor. And then I'll put them in containers of two to four cups and freeze them. And that way we can use them in varied size recipes. So what are you gonna be cooking today with the part that you do not freeze. I'm probably going to be making some pumpkin bread. We hope you enjoyed this video. For more recipes and cooking videos, please visit from a to vegan.com. <laughs>